Hello, I'm Bra Mithra. Um, this is a super long video. Just simple, flat out as that. Yeah, it's like two hours. Um, things go crazy, the antelope runs away. Draw the trap like five or six, seven times, eight times, a hundred times. I don't know. It's insane. Um, again, thank you to everybody who decides to watch this insanity because this goes bad. This goes poorly and very bad. It's a level two antelope. Um, I was close to, um, like, complete wipe. So, yeah, fun. Uh, again, thank you to everybody. The support that I've been shown during this is insane, more so than I would even have thought ever to have happened. Um, so I'm so glad that this is able to uh, be entertaining for all the people who watch it. Um, so if you like watching someone struggle to draw cards uh, from a hit location deck that aren't the trap, uh, this should be a great video. Yeah, I think probably like close to 50% of the cards I draw from the hit location deck are, are traps this time. So, again, thank you very much for all the support. Uh, it means a lot. You don't understand how much, so I'm just always humbled. Uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next uh, Lantern Year. Here we are. We're all set up to hunt the antelope, the level 2 antelope here. So you can see he starts after Overwhelming Darkness. He's two spaces behind it. So, um, we will start off. Uh, it's a first one is an antelope event, so we're going to start with Aurora. Again, because you're far less likely to die on a monster event than you are a random hunt event. So here we go, it is Stampede. A thunderous boom approaches the, survi uh, approaches. the survivors may hide. If they do, move the quarry one space back. Otherwise, all survivors gain plus one courage, and the event revealer rolls 1d10. So, let's see, what could we do? All survivors suffer two event... Uh, no, we don't want to do that. Chaos survivors glimpse the monster. Suffer two brain damage. Yeah, you know what? We're just going to hide. It's cowardly, but, you know, I don't want to really start right away. Uh, and I don't want everybody to suffer brain event damage and things. So, what can you do? Just going to hide, so... He gets moved one space back. Okay, um, now it is a random hunt event, so we'll go with Kenna. So random hunt event. Here we go. Uh, 96. Oops. 96. It's pretty high. Pretty high indeed. Okay. 96 is a cloaked stranger. A, a cloaked form steps out from a patch of darkness ahead of the survivors. Its ill-fitting garment shifts atop its form and its trudging leaves dark black puddles in the mouths of the rain-slick stone on the ground. The event revealer approaches the stranger and rolls 1d10. Okay. Presso will roll 1d10. Okay, here we go. 1d10 1D from, uh, not Caressa, uh, Kenna. Five. As you near the stranger, you realize that they're floating in the air. You barely make out a dry rasping coming f from the form that seems to resemble laughter. <laughs> I just I don't know why it has a question mark, but whatever. It has an ellipsis and then laughter. Uh, after the stranger departs, you return to the group, face bone white, refusing to speak of what you saw. Suffer three event damage. Okay. Okay. So, uh, three brain event, three brain event damage is what I meant to say. 
So Kenna goes down to five insanity. Kind of sucked. Okay, uh, another antelope hunt event. Now we'll do Caressa. Again, when I do these um, hunt events, I always the most important survivors I have are the ones I always choose to do the actual monster-specific ones, because the random ones can be really bad. All right, so this is a dead antelope. The survivors are struck by the scent of rotting meat waiting from hunt... Uh, from a hulking corpse ahead. The event revealer may lead the survivors to investigate. If they do, they gain one random vermin resource, two random screaming antelope resources, and roll 1d10. On a result, seven plus the survivors are startled by the arrival of the antelope's killer, a white lion. Oh. This is the dead antelope event, which is now replacing with a giggle lion. And I don't really want to fight another giggle lion. Um. Yeah, so, yeah, the dead antelope would trigger Giga Lion, which is n not fun. Um, so we're not going to do that. So it looks like we're going to get a random hunt event, just, and just because I don't want to fight a random Giga Lion. <sighs> it would be a level 3 as well. So we'll just roll the random hunt event. Okay, random hunt event for, oh, uh, now it's Caressa. Uh, 31. Okay, 31. A uh, strange path. The survivor stops at the head of a path. Small lanterns twinkle, marking its edges. The event revealer decides whether or not the survivors follow the path. If the event revealer is insane, they must. Uh, yep, she's insane. The survivors follow. If the survivors follow their path, with they mu they must now. The event revealer gains plus one understanding and rolls one d10 and adds their understanding. Okay, so she is insane. She has four insanity, so she's going to gain plus one understanding. That puts her at five understanding now. And now they must roll on this. Okay. Here we go. This is the must roll. So we have a plus five to this. So that would be an eight. Uh, the path leads the survivors to a large stone face with lanterns for eyes. Inside its open mouth is a bounty. Each survivor gains one random basic resource. Oh, okay. That's great. Um, let's do that right now. So, random basic resources. Here we go. Shuffle up the... Oops. Shuffle up the basic resources. Oh, let's get this dice out of here. Okay, here we go. Random resources, so pow, hide, hide, organ, hide. Okay, that's amazing. So there they are, three hide and one organ, which I couldn't be happier about. Amazing. Because if you saw the last lantern here, uh, we got no hide. I apparently was so bad, uh, so I just got to mark these down. What was it? It was three hide and one organ. Okay, so let me just mark this down here that we got these. So, that's great. Okay, what event was that? 31? I'll remember to be more happy next time I see the event 31. I'll forget. Um, so now it has to be Rodin, and this is going to be a random one. Okay, another random one. Rodin. Uh, one. Okay, event one. Broken lanterns. Survivors feel something crunching beneath their feet. The event revealer may choose to lower their lantern and investigate or ignore the sensation and continue their journey. If they choose to investigate, the event revealer gains plus one courage and rolls on 1d10. Otherwise, roll again on the hunt event table before moving forward. 
Um, okay. So we will definitely investigate because I don't want to roll another random hunt event. So this is Rodin. I don't think he's prepared. So isn't that... Oh no, Explorer is when you can add to investigate. Okay, so what is it he's gaining? First he's going to gain plus one courage. Okay, so he's... Got four courage now. Okay. Four courage. Now he'll roll 1d10. A uh, five. Um, so he's going to suffer two. You fumble and cut your foot on jagged shards. This. <sighs> Man, Rodin always loses his boots or always gets some kind of crazy nonsense attacking his feet. He lost his rawhide boot that one time. Okay, so he's got two damage to his feet. So he's got one damage now on his feet. Or I mean he's got one armor left on his feet. Okay. Um, now we can restart. So, let's just feel lucky here with Aurora. She's going to go first. Let's just feel lucky. Forty-six. Okay, forty-six. The survivors come to the edge of the river, to edge of river of blood. Oh, nice. I think that's where we found that lead our lead, lightning, uh, the leader. <laughs> okay, so non-insane survivors suffer one brain event damage at the sight of it. Everyone's insane. The survivors must investigate in order to pick up the quarry's trail. Each survivor rolls 1d10. If no survivor successfully finds the monster's trail, roll again on the hunt event table before moving on the hunt board. Okay, so it's a 1d10. Uh, Aurora is first, because she's just started all this. Seven. Um, seven. You realize that the bro that you realize that the Blood River is filled with the bloated corpses of unrecognizable monsters. You feel compelled to fish some out. Gain one random basic resource. If you are wearing heavy gear, you fall in and swallow blood and soft, bloated monster bits. Reduce your survival to one. Uh, is she wearing any heavy gear? I don't think she is. Yeah, the Zabato is not heavy. So she's not wearing any heavy gear. So what is it she gains? Gain one random basic resource. Okay, so Aurora gains a, a random resource. Now we go to Rodin. Uh, he is also not an explorer. Uh oh, that's probably not good. You lose your balance and fall into the river of blood. Instantly, a massive parasite crams its way down your throat, scavenging your insides on the way in. Suffer the broken rib, severe body injury. You hope that that's all the parasite does to you. Okay, uh, broken rib, severe injury. What does that do? Uh, body, broken rib. It even hurts to breathe. Suffer minus one permanent speed. This injury is permanent and can be reverted multiple times. Okay. So, minus one permanent speed he has now. Rodin, minus one speed. Minus one permanent speed. Okay. Um, that sucked. Okay, so that was Rodin. Um, okay, Kenna is an explorer, so she gets to add plus two, is it, or plus three, or adds her hunt experience. What is it when you investigate? Let me look real quick. Plus two, so she adds plus two to her rolls because she is an explorer. Okay, so Kenna now, rolling 1d10. Uh, that is a 10, 
So nine plus, you successfully find the monster's trail. Okay, so now I guess I have to roll one more time. Even though we found the trail, she wasn't the last one. So I guess I have to roll now with Caressa. Okay, so Caressa, uh, she is also not an explorer. Okay. Uh, six. You realize the Blood River is filled? Okay. If you are wearing any heavy gear, I don't think she's wearing heavy gear either. She is not. Uh, in one random basic resource. So I have to get two basic resources. Oops, I just shut the book. I did not mean to shut the book. Because I still have to roll another random hunt event. Okay. Not now. Uh, later on up there. Okay, so we did find it. Um, that sucks. So he's got minus one permanent speed because he's got a broken rib now for Rodin. That sucks. And okay, two basic resources. Okay, two basic resources because Aurora and Caressa, they fished them out. Okay, here we go. Uh, rando and a monster hide. Or wild, not, not random. <laughs> wild and a monster hide. Okay, let's write that down. Makes sense that in a river of blood, just a floating body parts, you would get just a wild one. Uh, so we got four hide now. Four hide, one organ. Plus a question, question, question. All right, so I adjusted the camera and moved it over a little bit. Okay, so that is uh, Aurora. It's because we're starting a new cycle now. I went with all four originally. Now I'll start with Aurora again. Now we have overwhelming darkness. So we'll just move in because you can't die. Well, I mean, you could die from overwhelming darkness, but it's not like you could prevent it. If it's going to happen, you'd have to roll anyway. So I'll just move in with Caressa. Okay, so overwhelming darkness now. So for overwhelming darkness, uh, insane survivors, which everybody is insane, are going to walk the path of the insane. So we don't have any choice really there. Um, the only thing we could do is survivors with plus three courage walk the path of the brave. So I think everybody has plus three courage, except for Aurora, who only has two. However, uh, Ken is a leader, so she can make uh, Aurora walk the path of the brave by using her courage. So everyone's going to walk the path of the brave then. Okay, so path of the brave... First, for um, Aurora, we'll go with Path. Um, here we go. Aurora. This is seven. Your lantern. With your lantern held high, you cut a path through the darkness, suffer one damage to your arms. Okay, so she had no body armor there, so she's got a light injury now. The arms. Rodin. Uh, you punch yourself in the face to chase away doubt. Minus one accuracy token. Okay. <laughs> Rodin's got a minus one accuracy. Uh, minus one accuracy token for Rodin. Okay. Uh, this is for Kenna. She already is a leader, so she can't gain it again. Okay. Uh, is that seven? Is that punching herself in the face? Oh no, this is the event damage to the arms. Lantern held high, cut a path through. Event damage to your arms. She also has no armor, so she will suffer a one light to the arms. Okay. That's the overwhelming darkness for everybody now. Okay, so now for Kenna, she's going to do herself a rando monster event. 
carpet of ticks. The ground is covered with a carpet of huge, writhing ticks. Each survivor must try to fend off the swarm. Roll 1d10 and add your hunt experience to the result. On a result of 6+, plus, you successfully smash the ticks away in a shower of gore. Okay. I don't know if anybody can fail this. These are like... It's our go-to team here. So, Kenna. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, Kenna's got 6. Aurora's got 6. Caressa has 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Rodin has 6. I mean, people have more than 6. I'm just saying everybody has 6 hunt experience, so... Adding that to the roll means as long as I don't roll a 1 here... There's no way any of them can fail. Um, all right. So, first for Aurora, she didn't fail. Rodin, he didn't fail. Kenna, she didn't fail. Caressa, she didn't fail. Okay. Uh, everybody killed all those ticks. In the carpet of ticks. Okay, now we get the white die here. Uh, so the only person left now is Rodin uh, to do the last rando hunt event. 41. Rando hunt event number 41. Okay, great. The event reveal, or it's nightmare. The event revealer dreams of the upcoming hunt. The great beast vanishes during their battle and secretly follows them back to the settlement. They helplessly watch as it devours all they know and love. The event revealer gains 1d10 insanity and minus 1 evasion token. That's not great because we're going to go fight the antelope here, but it's kind of great because Rodin's immortal. Uh, he's going to gain 6 insanity. But sucks sucks because now he's got minus 1 evasion token, so he's... Going to just lose the one you get from the flower bash, pretty much. Okay, so he's getting six. He's at 15 sanity. Uh, that's that's a lot. Um, especially since you can die at 20 plus with the antelope. Okay. If the settlement has a savior, they appear in the dream and defend their home. The event revealer gains 1d5 survival. Okay. Uh... He, who cares? He, he's insane. I mean, he's immortal and apathetic, so he can't use survival anyway. Even if he wasn't immortal, he still couldn't use survival. If no survivor in the settlement or hunting party has a twilight sword, the event revealer envisions a maniacal version of themselves, wielding the blade and gleefully slaughtering the beast. They awake to find a twilight sword at their side. Oh, man. Humming gently against their body. Instinctively, the survivor recognizes the weight of the weapon's curse and the promise of its power. The event revealer gains the Twilight Sword rare gear. They may also select Twilight Sword as a weapon proficiency and gain plus one weapon proficiency in this weapon. Man, that sucks. That sucks. So, um... He is not going to do that. <laughs> I mean, he is, he's not going to take the uh, Twilight Sword proficiency. Uh, but he has to take the Twilight Sword, which sucks a lot. Um, this sucks a lot because... This sucks a lot. <laughs> he's already got the stupid Lovelorn Rock. So now he's carrying around two useless items. Okay. Uh, so he's got a full equipment gear grid. So I guess he's just going to throw his monster grease away. Because I can't throw anything else away. So there he goes. Throws his monster grease away. That brings him down to just one evasion now. Uh, and he's got the twilight sword. So great. That's great. I'm. That's just. That's just super good. That's so good. I'm. I'm glad that that happened. That's so good. 
Good thing it happened to Rodin, because that would have sucked for anybody else, pretty much. Okay, good. Great. Good and great. I mean, he's just absolutely awesome, and now he's probably going to die fighting the stupid Hooded Knight, which I think we actually have Hooded Knight next year. Um... No, we don't, but it's soon. It's the, it's not this year, it's after the hand, so it's next year. Uh, yeah, so he's probably going to just die to that. Okay, great, so that's the end of the hunt. Super great. Let's start the showdown with the antelope. All right, here we are, set up for the showdown. Um, I forgot, usually I draw the terrain cards, but I forgot to do that. Uh, so what they were... Where'd I put them? Oh. So, normal thing. Canthus plants. That's normal. The bug patch. Also normal. So the bug patch is right here. Uh, it's in line with Kenna right here. Because Kenna's vermin obsessed. So she's now doomed. Until we get that. So, um... That's the two normal cards for uh, the Screaming Antelope, and then we drew an ore vein and a Survivor Corpse. So that ore vein, the Survivor Corpse is right here, next to Kenna. It just needs to be six spaces, and then here's the ore vein right there next to Aurora. Um, actually, he should be here, and these guys should be moved down one. So he's definitely the closest threat right away. Okay. Those are the extra two terrain. Now we draw a tactic card, which I think I've been forgetting to do this with Rodin or whoever was tanking because they always have the uh, Flower Knight badge on them. So draw the tactic card right there. Quad Strike. I think we've had this before. Uh, it's almost never going to be done because I don't think we'll ever be in that formation. But if we are, during the survivor's turn, with the survivors and the monster are arranged according to the diagram above, you may spend one survival to quad strike. If you do, each survivor rolls 1d10, adds their strength attribute bonus. If the total result is equal to or higher than the monster's toughness, the monster is knocked down and suffers one wound. So, that's great. So we also have quad strike. If that ever happens, we will do that. Uh, it's unlikely because Caressa uses ranged weapon, but maybe, you never know. Um, he does run around a bit. It's going to be hard to get everybody right next to him on the same turn, but we shall see. Um, so, that's it. Now we're all set up. Now, Screaming Antelope, level 2. Here he is right here. Again, plus 1 speed, plus 1 damage. He's going to have 16 hits. And he has Trample and Diabolical. Now, I know we've fought Antelopes before, so Trample is just when they collide, you suffer damage equal to monster level. So that's we've done that before. Here's Diabolical. This is new for level 2. This is at the end of the round, or at the end of the monster's turn, uh, you target a random survivor within the Trample Zone. So that's any of the cardinal directions, and then the whole width of the board. So he would be in it, and it goes just like that. Uh, and then you perform, you either full move through the target, and pass the survivor. If there is no target, you just full move forward at the end of every round. So, he's going to be running around kind of like what the Giggle Lion was doing last Lantern Year. Except he always went away, so he's just going to go forward regardless. Okay, uh, the hunt event, or the hunt phase, just in general, was good and really bad. <laughs> uh, so our tank only has one evasion now, so that sucks. And he's got a minus one accuracy. Uh, he's got Twilight Sword now, so he'll probably die next year. So, great. So, that sucks. That's just terrible in all general general ways it could possibly be. So, here we go. Starting the showdown with the Screaming Antelope. And the first card is Ravenous. Closest survivor. In range. Okay, so he has a movement of 8. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's actually not in range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, not in range. So, closest survivor in field of view. So he is in field of view. So he will move and attack. Because it doesn't matter if he's in range for the second part of it. Uh, move and attack, speed one, accuracy two, damage two. So he's just going to come running over to us and stop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. That was a weird thing to do, antelope. Okay, thanks for coming right over to us. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, that's weird. Okay. Now, uh, that is really weird. Oh, and then he's going to do Diabolical. So that's guaranteed to be Rodin. But he can't full move through the target because Rodin's at the end of the board. So full move through the target. Move the monster through and past the survivor. He can't... He can't move past him. <laughs> he can move into him. Uh, but he can't move through him. So I guess he's just going to full move forward uh, and then stop causing collision. Uh, so he's just going to suffer two damage. Okay. So he's going to full move forward and stop at the board edge, cause collision. Now Rodin's not knocked down because shield master, or he's shield specialist. So... When shield is in your gear grid, you are no longer knocked down after collision with a monster. So he's not going to be knocked down. But he will suffer two damage. I mean, I'll roll it anyway to his feet. Who cares? He's immortal. So he's down to 13 insanity. Okay. And he's not knocked down, so he's standing. And that was the end of Diabolical. Now that's the end of the turn. Um... Let's just get this thing. Now she's doomed. Aurora is, or not Aurora, Kenna, because she's got Vermin Obsession. So she's doomed, but that's just because of the presence of this. So I could have someone else get it because they could dash over to it because it's only her who's doomed. So other people could spend survival to grab that stupid thing. However, I kind of want to get my hits in now, so what I'm going to do is start with Caressa. She's going to do our typical claw head arrow. She's got one accuracy. This hits on six plus. It's five plus. Um, but what we're actually going to do is we're just going to do the one shot, which is range nine, to so get plus four accuracy. This becomes a two plus to hit. She's got net. It's just going to hit on a one. One, two, three, four. Five to move her here, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. This will work. We'll get her out of the trample zone or out of the diabolical zone or whatever that is. Um, okay. Then we will. So, yeah, we'll shoot him now with the claw head arrow. It's one accuracy. Um, I always forget that you don't treat arrows the same as the weapon. They have different accuracy and everything, but just the Vesper Team Bone Blood Arrow the same. Um, so it's just going to be the one shot hitting on anything besides a one. That's a hit. So that now causes the minus one evasion. Um, yep, so he's got the minus one evasion now. Put that token out. All right. Because you don't need to wound with the arrow, arrow, the clawed arrow. It's just if you hit the monster. Okay. Now we will roll to wound. But first we'll draw the the delicate inverted knee. Maybe the club or a shield. Uh, plus two luck, whatever. This has a critical wound, so we can crit. Here we go. Now she has a plus four luck, so she's going to be critting on a six. Wounding on, he has toughness 10, we have strength uh, 9, 
So again, only critting on a six, wounding on a missing, or not wounding on a one. So critting on a six, failing on a one. That's a wound. Not a crit, but it's a wound. So one wound. And she gains her bow proficiency. Good all around. Okay. That's Caressa. Now let's get in there with Aurora right here. Um, she has to hit with Fist and Tooth. So we will go... Two, one, two, three, four, five. Just to get in the blind spot. Uh, we're going to dash anyway to get out of the Diabolical. Or, well, yeah, to get out of Diabolical. Plus, I don't want to just be behind him in general. So I know she's going to be dashing. So... It's okay to be in a blind spot. I know blind spot can be bad with this monster kick, but it's fine doing it anyway. Because <laughs> I just care about hitting with the fist and tooth. Okay, so fist and tooth is accuracy 8 plus. She has an 8 accuracy of 1. Monster has minus 1 evasion. So she is hitting on 6 plus speed 2 with her fist and tooth. Uh, so that's two hits. Okay. No. Are you kidding me? So I drew the trap right away. I, right away. Not right away. It was the second, third card in the deck. But still. Trap. Terrible. This is really bad that this happens. <sighs> that's really bad that that happened. Screaming yellow panics. See, it sucks that she's the one with the cat eye circlet, but I have to get these, I have to get Fist and Tooth in. Okay, Screen Animal Panics, it's Under Maw, Inhuman, Bucks Wily, Into the Air, the attacker is doomed. All survivors adjacent to the monster suffer two brain damage per monster level, knock back five, and are knocked down. Monster lands on its belly and begins to slide on its teeth. Turn the monster directly away from the attacker, it already is, she was in the blind spot. Full move forward in a straight line. Uh, so he's just going to run right into the wall and stop. Because um, he he doesn't he's not starting his turn on the wall. He ran into the wall last time. Oh no, he didn't run into the yeah he didn't run into the wall last time, and then diabolical pushed him into the wall. So he is starting his his wall or he is starting his first time adjacent to the wall this time right now. Okay. Um, move forward in a straight line. On collision, non-death survivors gain one random disorder in addition to normal collision rules. Okay, so I guess just going to get the disorder on Rodin, because who cares? Gonna, I'm planning on him dying anyway. I'm not planning on it. I mean, it's probable that that's going to happen anyway. Okay, uh, so let's handle everything else, and then we're going to have him go this way. All right, here we go. So she animal panics, attacker is doomed. So she's doomed. Also, our Jason the Monster suffered two brain damage. So Rodin is down to 11. Uh, Aurora is down to three. So everyone, they're still insane, or she's still insane. Um, oh, it's two brain damage per monster level. So she's down to one insanity. And he's down to nine because they suffer four damage total. Okay. Now she's not insane anymore. And are knocked down. Okay. That's fine. And knock back five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so she's out here and she's knocked down, but she's going to stand right away anyway because she's Fist and Two Specialist. Not right away, but she can stand at the start of the monster's turn. So. Uh, okay, now the other one is. Knock back five again. One, two, three, four, five. So he is knocked down because that's not from collision. That's from the trap. Um, directly away from the attacker. Full move forward in a straight line. So it is already directly away. It is non-deaf survivors gain one random disorder. Okay. Uh, so it's going to full move. So he's got eight. So yeah. It's going to go all the way to the wall again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's going to hit the wall. And he's going to be pushed to here. 
and now he's on the wall. Again, edge of the board, so he stops there. Okay, so now he's going to gain a random disorder. So let's handle that first. I know that trample is also going to take effect, but we're going to resolve the fullness of the trap before we do the uh, trample card, before we move to the next card. Okay, random disorder. Let's see what it is. Of course, it's traumatized. Whenever you end your act adjacent to a monster, you are knocked down. Okay. Okay, so now that goes there. Uh, I can quickly write down traumatized on his thing. Okay, traumatized. He's got the traumatized disorder. Whatever. This goes back in there. Disorders. Okay. That is now the end of the trap card. Now trample, okay, while I'm reshuffling this, when the monster collides with the survivor, they suffer damage equal to the monster's level to a hit location. So he's just gonna take two more damage, putting him at seven insanity. I'll roll it. Body, doesn't matter. That's just merely for rules sake, seven damage, or seven insanity. Well, remember all that talk about maybe someone else would go get that bug? That's not happening. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Here she goes. On her way to get that bug. Uh, oh, she'll get do the survivor before she moves. Uh, so, survival corpse. Here we go. Survivor corpse. Gain two insanity and a random resource. Survivor Corpse, done. Uh, who was that? That is Kenna. So she's up to seven insanity. And another random basic resource. Right? It did say basic. I think I just put it on the top of the deck. It's a random basic, yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously it's a survivor. Why would it be a random monster? I don't even know why I looked. That was dumb. Of course it's a basic. Monster Bone. Okay, now I gotta write that down on my little thing here. Okay, give an extra bone now. I mean, we have quite the haul already. We're at four hides, one organ, one random, and one bone, and we haven't even killed this thing yet. Okay, uh, that's the end of the month, or the end of the survivor's turn. Remember, she stands because she's fist and two specialist. Uh, you can stand at the start of the monster's turn. Stand at the start of the monster's turn. Okay, so she stands. Um, now it is the monster's turn. Closest knockdown, survivor in range, which obviously <laughs> is roped in. Uh huh. Move and attack target. So he's going to just attack and then he's going to trample. Or, well, he's not going to. He's going to move straight away from all the survivors and then trample. Okay, so first he's just going to attack. Uh, speed 1, accuracy 2 plus. He's got natural 1 evasion, so it's going to be speed 2, because he's got plus 2. Or he's got plus 1 speed. So it's a speed 2, accuracy uh, three, 3 plus. That's 2 hits. Okay. Damage is going to be 2 hits, 2 per hit. Again, 2-2, two, two. that's 4 damage. He's down to 3. Insanity. I remember he had 15 going into this fight. It's only been one round. <laughs> that is crazy. Okay. Uh, now we'll finish up this card. Full move the screening antelope in a straight line away from all survivors. Okay. Full move the screening antelope in a straight line away from all survivors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's to here. Uh, and then he's going to be facing this way. That matters, his facing, because now he's going to do Diabolical. And no one is in the trample zone, so he's just going to full move forward. So that's why the facing matters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Put some all the way here. Okay. That's the end of his turn now. Uh, you stand because you were knocked down last 
Survivor's turn. Okay. So he stands at the start of the next Survivor's turn. Okay. And now we are going with uh, Kenna. This is gone. One, two, three, four, five. Now she'll get this stupid bug patch. So she can now spend survival. Oops. Bolt shouldn't have been there anymore. Uh, four plus. Gain a random vermin. Okay. This is now gone. And we gain a random vermin. Sword Beetle. I'm not even going to read it because I'm not going to eat it. I'm going to save it for cooking. So, Sword Beetle. Got to write that on my little sheet. Okay. Um, this is now archived. Okay. Um, let's see the Kenna's turn. Rodin is still insane. <laughs> Couldn't spend survival if he wasn't. Five. He'll just move to here. One, two, three, four, five. And then he will block just four funsies. Uh, actually, he can look. It's, I mean, it's very unlikely that he's going to get hit. So, uh, how about we ride headband, I guess. It's going to be bite. I mean, this, uh, this card adds God. I don't want to even mess with it, so it's going to be Bite. It's going to be closest survivor in field of view. And then he's just going to move. So Bite's going to go on top. That's what he's doing next turn. So Bite, go ahead on top. Okay, that's the end of Roden's turn. And the uh, Kenna's turn. Now Caressa. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, she couldn't even shoot him if she wanted to. One, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four. Where's he gonna go? So let me just look at Bite here again. Closest survivor in field of view, which I'm gonna assume is always gonna be Rodin, but I'll just make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he'd go here and then he'd run into Kenna as it is right now. So he'd miss her, so he'd run into Kenna, as it is right now. Because how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 spaces away. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So as long as no one really goes like anywhere right here, we're good. Okay. So now she can spend survival, because we're going to have to do that. So Kenna's going to spend one survival. Move five. One, two, three, four, five to put her here. Okay, so. No, that's going to guarantee Rodin's targeted. And Aurora will go there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty. Yeah, so. You can guarantee Rodin's the one who gets targeted. And these two are just going to check Acanthus plants. So, Aurora first. Uh, three, I think it's fine, nothing. Yeah, fine, nothing. And Caressa, nine, she got a fresh acanthus. So one acanthus over here, and the other one's archived. Okay. Um, monster turn. So we know what he's going to do. It's going to be bite. Monster turn. Closest survivor in field of view. Um, yeah, so closest survivor in field of view. I wonder why it says no target graze. Is there ever a time? Oh, I guess you could be out of field of view if I drew a terrain that would block it, but it's almost never a time where that's not going to be a thing. If I mean, you have to be in the blind spot. All right, so closest survivor in field of view. Uh, then he's just going to move and then run away. So it's just, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Let's try and get as close as he can. So he's going to go here. Now he's going to do his diabolical and the monster's turn. Target random survivor on the trample zone, which no one is, is in any of the trample zones. Now he's going to full move eight again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to get to there. Okay. So, um, Kenna, one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five. Oh, whoops. One, two, three, four, five. Just get her to there. Just gonna slowly get everybody towards the middle because I know he's gonna try and then try to get him to move towards us. Aurora, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, she actually could get him if she dashed. Okay, so that's what she's gonna do. She's gonna dash. Spend one survival. She's down to four. She will dash. One, two, three, four. Or one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Okay. There we go. Again, just a two, two speed, eight plus. She's got plus one accuracy. She can't get into the blind spot. Oh, wait. Actually, yeah, she is in the blind spot because he's not looking that way. He moved this way and that way. So yeah, so she is in the blind spot. I don't know why I spun him. He wouldn't have turned to look a different way. Yeah, because he was here, so he ran and then ran. So he's still looking that way. He didn't hit the side of the wall. Okay, so she is in the blind spot. So then it's accuracy plus one for being in the blind spot. Uh, she's got innate accuracy one, and these hit on an eight. So she's hitting on a six plus. That's one. Uh, super tech. Uh, super dense. Okay, so she can still wound it. It just uh, is super dense, so it would have broken her Zambato, but she's not attacking with her Zambato. So, uh, Fist and Tooth are deadly, so she crits on a 9 plus, and she wounds on, she's got plus 2 strength. This has toughness 10, so she wounds on an 8, crits on a 9. That is a one. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Yep. Okay. <sighs> Seeing a one makes you so deflated. <sighs> I didn't want that to happen. I mean, obviously I wanted the wound, but I wanted her to at least get her hit so she wouldn't have to be near this thing anymore with this stupid fist and toothing it. She just needs one more. Oh, ones are so deflating. Okay. What am I going to do? One, two, three, four, five. Six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So if she dashed, she could get to range 5. Okay, I guess I'll do that with Caressa. So Caressa will dash. She'll spend 1 survival. Uh, it's range 5. So where do I have to be? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or wait... be right so she got here one two three four five yeah so she needs to get to here so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay and shooting with caressa now range five uh what we say it's accuracy six plus he's got minus oh i always forgot to take into account the minus one evasion from her bow. She would have actually hit twice Aurora. Oh well. Because she rolled a five, right? Yeah, five and a six. She would have actually hit twice. But that's okay, whatever. I can't remember for sure if that's what was rolled. Um, okay, so six plus, minus one evasion. That's five plus. She's got natural one accuracy. Four plus to hit. Two. 
two hits. Okay. So. Hmm, both these are pretty much going to happen. Uh, so let's see. So what's going to happen here with this wound? Your blow clips the screaming antelope's shoulder and then jumps back. Turn to face the attacker. Then without turning, move the monster one space directly away from the attacker. That's actually going to do nothing. So we'll do that one first. Alright, sorry about that. Um, some pumps started going. Uh, I don't know if you heard that in the background, but that's what that rumbling was, so uh, I paused <laughs> quickly. Uh, some pump's not the kind of thing you turn off because you're recording a video. <laughs> so you kind of let the sump pump run its thing, do its thing, you know. So there was a, a cut there. So I went back, I watched it. <clears throat> we were going to roll for this one. Uh, the reason why I said this doesn't happen because if you just look at the, the way the antelope is, even if I do wound him and then he does this wound reaction, he's just going to turn to look at her, and then he's just going to bump into the wall. So he, nothing happens. <laughs> All right. So now uh, we'll roll for this one first. All right. Um, to recalculate again, I don't. I forget if I had already said it, but. Uh, six strength on the Vespertine bow. She's got three strength. That's nine. He's got ten toughness. And she crits on a six. So it's anything here with a one. Uh, so that's a critical hit for that one. Uh, now that canceled the wound. So it didn't do anything anyway. And it's not going to do anything. So now the next one here. Um, well, I mean, we've already started wounding, so if the reflex happens, it happens. It's a 1 for the reflex to... No, the reflex is going to happen anyway, so it's a 6 plus to cancel the reflex, and a 1 to just miss. Okay, so the reflex is going to happen. Let's see. Turn the monster to face away from the attacker, and full move forward in a straight line. <laughs> so, again, same thing. So now he just turns here and runs into the wall. Uh, so let's get our Screaming Antelope random resource from the first crit, and we will remove two AI cards. One, two AI cards. Let's get one random Screaming Antelope resource. That one. Shank Bone. Shank Bone. So let me write that down quick. Shank bone. <clears throat> okay. That's those two hit locations. Um, well, so she did surge. Um, no, she did... Um, dash, so I can surge now. Um, Aurora. Let's dash with Aurora first. Um, or no, I dash to get in place. Uh, so, sorry, this, this, I had to cut and wait for the, you know, stupid sump pump to end and then the rain, so now it's not going to start again, but Okay, so I'm just, uh, I didn't watch back all the footage because I didn't want to move everything around and everything. So I might forget or make a mistake here, but um, I'm going to take the preference of not making a mistake over uh, thinking I can do something when I can't. So she dashed, she dashed, attacked, and missed. Rodin has done nothing as far as I can remember, and she moved. And did the the uh, bug. So if, if I'm wrong and she uh, she could have moved, whatever. I guess I'll find out in editing and this will be a wasted turn for her. But the only thing I'm going to do now, even if she could have dashed again, that sucks for me. I'm going to call it that she dashed to get there. 
And if I'm wrong, that sucks, and I'll just take the penalty. So I'm just going to surge with her, and then move him. Uh, yeah. I think he headbanded last turn. Yeah, he headbanded last turn, so he can move this turn still. Um, okay, so that's it. I'm just going to surge with her, and I'm going to say everyone else already did stuff, and hopefully I remember, I'm remembering correctly. Okay, so surging with her, with Caressa, brings her down to three. Survival. You get a third dice here. Uh, minus one evasion. She's at six plus to hit, five plus to hit because of minus one evasion. Four plus to hit because she's got one natural accuracy. Four plus to hit. Here we go. That's three hits. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I drew the trap. Oh man, this is actually not going well at all. Okay, um, so we'll handle the trap again. I'm not going to reread the whole thing and put it on the camera. I'm just going to do it because I know he's just going to run around. So you made a little pander, panics. Attacker is doomed. That's fine. All survivors adjacent to the monster suffer two brain damage. So they're going to suffer four brain damage. So that's going to trigger because Aurora only had one insanity left. So that's going to trigger uh, trauma for her. Brain trauma. Um, and then knockback five. One, two, three, four, five. That's going to put her to here. One, two, three, four. Wait. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's right. Uh, and then she's knocked down, but again, she gets to stand at the start of the monster's turn because she's fist and two specialist. Monster lands on his belly, begins to slide on his teeth. Turn the monster directly away from the attacker. So that, the attacker was her, so she's already facing directly away from the attacker. And full move forward in a straight line. So that runs into the wall. Um, I'm trying to think. The last reaction from this last card sent him into the wall. So technically... Yeah, the, re the reaction from this one sent him into the wall, so technically he can move now because he ended his last turn against the wall, so this wouldn't run him into the wall. My mistake. Um, and full move in a straight line, so she's going to run into this wall then. She's just going to go blip, blip, because he's going to run away. So what he's trying to do is run away, so he just runs into this wall now. Um... So no one's going to collide. Okay, so now we that's finished the wound. Or the, not the wound, that finishes the uh, trap. So let's reshuffle. This sucks. <laughs> Drawing this trap like this really sucks. Okay. Um, I guess this was bound to happen because we've been getting pretty good on the traps. I remember like the Kingsman, we were super lucky on that trap. Okay, so I guess it just was bound to happen eventually. So she's going to stand, um, but first let's do brain trauma for her brain trauma. Now, um, we get plus two on all our brain trauma rolls because we accept the darkness. So you add plus two to all your brain trauma rolls. Okay. So here we go, brain trauma. Um, here, brain, brain trauma. So that's a nine on brain trauma. New perspective. You were knocked down, which she already is, and she just gains one d10 insanity. So it's actually not that bad. She's just going to gain four insanity and stand right back up. So now she's back to four insanity. Or she's not going to stand up right now, but she stands at the start of the monster's turn because she's a specialist. Okay. Um... Rodin. I would like for him to get a shield specialty. It would be great. <laughs> but at the same time... One, two, three, four, five. If I could get him here... 
he can't spend. Uh, he's still insane. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two. Okay, so I, it's going to be a 50 50 for Diabolical here. I can't, there's because I'm just looking at it. I don't see a way for me to prevent him from running this way for Diabolical. So with that said, getting in the blind spot is not an option. Because technically he was this way, and then he ran this, so he's facing this way. So going here. Okay, I'll go there. Actually, I'll go here. Okay, and now I will attack with the shield. Um, so he's got minus one permanent speed now. So that brings the knuckle shield down to two speed. He's also got minus one accuracy. So it's a seven plus to hit with the knuckle shield on two speed. Uh, okay, that's a perfect hit, so one hit. Draw the hit location. Okay. Oh, nice. It's one of those ones. So it's the club, it's the shield where it gets plus two luck. Okay, so if you with a club or a shield, club of the monster and gain plus two luck when attempting to wound this. So great, because he has crappy strength. Well, it's not crappy, but he's, the shield, knuckle shield has one strength. Uh, he has plus two strength normally, so he's going to wound on a seven because it's ten toughness. And he's also going to crit on an eight. So wounding on a seven, critting on an eight. Uh, two. That sucks. Uh, that really sucks. But there's no reflex, so... <sighs> it's double sucks because I wanted the free block. And then on top of that, it also would have been nice... <laughs> to get the shield proficiency, but it is what it is, whatever. This is turning out to be really bad. Okay. Here we go. Closest knocked down survivor. Uh, none of them are knocked down because she's standing now. Furthest threat in field of view, in range. That's Caressa. Um, okay, so move and attack. It's always going to be the body as well. So it's going to be, okay, so he's going to get collided and trampled. So one, or let me count this, one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five. So collide, but he's not knocked down from collision because of shield specialist. But he does get trampled. Um, but he's going to get pushed to here. Which is not great, but what can you do? So, suffers damage. Again, I'll just roll this, but he's going to suffer the two damage to his head, but he's still insane. So that brings him down to one insanity now. So now he's not insane anymore. Now he starts taking normal damage to his hit locations. Or to his armor locations. Alright, so that resolved the trample. He's not knocked down because he's a shield specialist. So he doesn't get knocked down in collision. Now let's resolve the attack. Speed 2, damage 3. Okay, speed 2, damage 3. Um, okay, speed 2, damage 3. She's got no natural evasion. Great, no natural evasion. But she's got 5 insanity. But no natural evasion. All right, here we go. Uh, speed, two, or what's the accuracy? Accuracy 2 plus. Yep, no natural evasion. That sucks. Okay, 2 plus. K. 
Okay, so now these always are body. It's going to be three damage to the body. Well, she'll spend one survival to dodge that. And now three damage to the body, which is going to be a heavy injury for her. Okay, heavy, which roll, oh wait, I gotta do the bottom of this card. If this attack damages the target, you draw an AI card. Okay, so let's draw an AI card after that. But first, do a severe injury to the body. Oh, she's knocked down because of severe injury, so knocked down. That's important since I have to draw another AI card, it might not target, whoops, might not target her. Okay, severe injury to the body. Okay, seven. Uh, body was this? Seven. Ruptured spleen. Oh, what didn't she do this before? Yeah, I think this is why she had to skip. Oh, so she's got another ruptured spleen. Oh no, she was disemboweled one time and had to. That's why she had to skip a hunt. Now she's got a rush of spleen. A vicarious body blow. Skip the next hunt. Gain two bleeding tokens. Okay. So she has to skip the next hunt, and we're gaining two bleeding tokens. Oh, this is this is going really bad. Okay, so Carissa's got two bleed tokens. She's got to skip the next hunt. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, draw another AI card. Okay. Chow down. If there are no Acanthus plants on the showdown board, discard chow down. Perform basic action. Full mood screening antelope to the closest Acanthus plant. The monster ends its movement on or adjacent to an acanthus plant. It consumes it. Archive the terrain and perform heal. One t five. Okay. Uh, one t. Yeah, he's just gonna go. It's one. I guess two, three, four would be the. This is the closest because this would have been five to get on both of them. So he's gonna eat this one. Okay. And now we're gonna heal 1d5. Okay. Place Chow Down on the top of the monster's AI card deck. Okay, so now we heal 1d5. Uh, two. So two, one wound actually. That's great. Only healing one wound. Okay. First, let me read this first. So, um,. Move the top one card from the wound stack to the bottom of the deck. And then you place this one on top. Okay. That goes there. This goes on the bottom. This is going really bad. Okay. Now he does Diabolical. Which no one now... Thankfully no one was actually in the trample zone. <laughs> so he's just going to move forward eight... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Weird. So it started off really bad, but didn't actually end that badly. Um, everyone got moved out of the trample zone, and then he didn't trample anybody, and he ran away. Huh. Okay. Um, Kenna can actually attack now, so we'll do that. One, two, three, four... She can be here. One, two, three, four. Yep. Now she can attack with her spear. So it's got two speed, accuracy, six plus. Uh, he's got minus one evasion. She's got natural one accuracy. So hitting on a four plus with two speed. Uh, oh, she doesn't have time aside. But... Um, Actually, she should have three of these stupid markers. I'm forgetting that she's got this momentum, this propulsion drive. So she's got three of these. Okay. And then I forget exactly what propulsion drive does. I think I had to spend four of them. Hold on, I'm just going to grab propulsion drive. First time she's gotten to use it since I've gotten it. Propulsion drive. It started the showdown. Yep. So you have five plus momentum tokens. Okay. So I'll just put this to the side right now. 
And just remember that it's if she has five plus. Okay. Um, okay, so she's attacking. She's only got three right now. Uh, so that's not a perfect hit, but that's two hits. Okay. Draw two hits. Two. Okay, so minus two toughness to the first location. Okay, so we're doing the minus, we're doing the wound one first because. So minus two toughness to the location. So the spear has three strength, kind of has three strength, that's six. It's minus two, so that's eight. Um, yep, so she wounds on a 2 plus. 2 plus is a wound. Okay, that's a wound. <laughs> right? Yeah, 2 plus her 6 is 8, minus 2 is 10. Yep, so that's a wound. Uh, blood and spill erupt from the screaming antelopes, wounded Undermaw. If the wound result is even, suffer 1 brain damage. Okay, so she suffers 1 and uh, she goes down to 6 insanity. But that is a wound. So that's the end of Chow Down. Okay. Next. Um, same. Oh no. So this one doesn't have the minus two toughness. So this is four plus to wound. Uh, ten to crit. So it's just a four plus to wound. Okay. So that's a wound. So it's not a failure. And that's another wound. Great. So, she's got her spear proficiency. I, uh, I mean, I guess I should surge with her. What the hell, right? Okay, I'll surge with her. She'll spend one survival to surge. Brings her down to three survival. So, she hits uh, six plus. He's got minus one evasion. That's five plus. She's got natural one accuracy. Four plus, two speed. Again, that's two hits. Um, where she would have gotten perfect hits, but that's okay. Um, what am I doing? So here they are. It's a wound and a failure. What happens on this wound? If you're attacking, uh, you're attacked to some. Minus one movement. Okay, so we'll do this one first. The wound, the wound reaction first, cause just in case. Okay, uh, we'll calculate again. Three strength from the king spear. She's got natural three strength. That's six. So she'll be wounding on a four plus. That's a miss. So the wound reaction does not happen. Okay. Next. Uh, same thing, uh, it's going to be a 4 plus to wound. Well, this is going to happen, well, no, not if I f don't fail. Okay, so 4 plus to wound. So wound is 7. So I didn't fail, uh, so that's one wound. Okay. Now, Kenna will spend another survival to encourage Caressa to stand up. Now, she's also a leader, so that means plus one speed for Caressa. So, Caressa, let's go. Oops. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, one, two, three, four, five. Get her to there. Um, so that's right. Uh, plus one speed. This is actually kind of dangerous because I haven't, uh, well, I'm having pretty luck with, with the trap, but um, this is really bad fight right now. So I really want to kill him as fast as I can. So four speed, six plus accuracy. He's got minus one evasion, that's five plus. She's got one accuracy, four plus. Four speed, four plus. Let's 
That's three hits. Okay. Uh, let's see. First we'll lay these all down. So this one, nothing. Okay, this one just turns to face. Okay, none of these cause him to move around or do anything. So, uh, let's read the criticals. Does any of these knock him down or something? So, the monster's knocked down. Uh, minus one toughness. Okay, so none of these cause him to move. So, let's just all do a who cares, right? None of these affect anything. <laughs> so, we'll just put them over there in the order we go. Okay, so... Uh, Anything but a one, and then a six plus is a crit. That's a critical, so, uh-huh. The monster is knocked down. Okay, good. When the mon so that's that. No, I would rather have had a resource, but he's knocked down. That's fine with me. Uh, okay, one to fail, six plus to crit. That is an actual crit, not even with her luck. That's awesome. Screaming an of resource. Um, minus one toughness. Okay. It's two wounds uh, and one antelope resource. Two wounds and one antelope resource. Um, again, so this is doesn't matter. What is it? Uh, one to miss, six to crit. That's another crit. It's two animal of resources and three wounds. Um, I don't think I moved the wounds yet. I just got to cut one. Yeah, I have not moved the wounds yet. So three wounds, two animal of resources. One, two, three wounds, two animal of resources. And he's still knocked down. Oh, and a minus one toughness. I got to give him minus one toughness token. And a minus one toughness. Okay. Ah, I'm really bad at shuffling cards. <laughs> okay. Two antelope resources. One large flat tooth and a pelt. Okay. Large flat tooth. A pelt. Okay. Um, she's going to surge because he's knocked down. So surging, might as well, right? Take advantage of it. It's three plus to hit now. She's got four speed. Three plus to hit with four speed. That's four hits. Four speed was just too much. There's the trap on the fourth card. <sighs> Four speed was too much. Okay, again, I'm not going to read the trap because it's been drawn so many times. Uh, the attacker's doomed, whatever. Uh, suffers two brain damage, so she's going to suffer four brain damage that puts her at one insanity. Okay, and knock back five. Okay, and slides on his T, turn the monster directly away, it already was. Full move forward in a straight line. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he hits the wall over here. Okay. That's the end of that. Um Well, you know, Aurora and Rodin have not gone. Cress is knocked down. It was a good idea, in theory, to get her to have four speed, but it's too much. Should 
Too much, too much. Okay. These other two have not gone. <sighs> so Aurora, well, I don't think there's anything I could possibly do to get Rodin to be the one who's going to get targeted. It's going to most likely be kind of who's going to be targeted. One, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Just get her to here. I know that's like kind of weird, but I don't want to, if anybody will die, I guess it'd be okay for Kenna or Rodan. Those are the two. So Caressa and Aurora are the ones that are going to stay way back because those two are, I guess, are the ones that are preferred to die if someone has to die. Oh, I don't know why I'm turning him. I'm just assuming that's what's going to happen. So now we draw the card. Buck. It's a mood. At the start of each monster's turn, target and attack any survivors in the blind spot. Okay. Now he's got this mood in play. Now it's diabolical. Well, uh, the only person is Caressa, who's way the hell over there. In the, but she is technically in the trim. Full move towards the target. Not going to get to her, but okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just right back to where we started. And he gets stabbed and poked with the uh, spear. Okay. <sighs> Aurora has not hit with fist and tooth, but I don't even know if I should really be worrying about that. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six. He's got like seven health left, possibly eight. Nothing's going to remove this mood, though. So nothing's going to remove that mood. So he's only got seven hits left, because that mood's staying in play. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. So he's got seven hits left. It's, if I encourage Caressa with Kenna, she could kill him. <laughs> But is that crazy to do that again? I don't think there's any way I can get close enough to damage him with Aurora. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's, I can't get close enough with Aurora. Okay, I'll encourage with Aurora, Caressa. So it brings Aurora down to three survival. And she'll just move five. One, two, three, four, five to there. Maybe next turn. So now she's standing. Okay, Kenna, you're attacking first with your spear. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Right, one, two, three, four, five. You're just going to do that. So she's going to go one, two, three, four, five and do this little like thing to get her here to get her another uh, momentum token. So she needs five of those, but she's got four now. Okay, now two speed. Accuracy 6 plus. She's got one accuracy. He's got minus one evasion. So it's a 4 plus, two speed. One hit. Not the trap. <laughs> Is it bad that I'm, like, assuming it's going to be the trap? Okay. So, oh man, she, like, has to crit? What does this wound do? Oh, okay. Room does nothing. Okay. Three strength from the spear. Three strength from her. That's six. It's got minus one toughness. That's seven. So a three plus is all I would need to uh, wound. Uh, and then obviously a ten to crit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a critical. Uh, what does the critical do? Your attack wrecks one of the monster's legs. If insane, you may spend five survival to treasure this moment forever and gain plus one permanent movement. She is insane, but she, um, she does not have five survival. So, that's one Screaming Antelope resource. And one wound. Now we do one Screaming Antelope resource. Shit. 
shank bone. Stop getting bones. <laughs> shank bone. Makes two of those. Okay. Uh, now she can... Oh, she already did move for her momentum. That was dumb. I should have momentum away. Oh, well. That was dumb. I'm st I'll just keep it as is. So she's done. She's done. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So he's going to definitely be the... Now he's going to block. So he's blocking. Now, Caressa, can you get close enough? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, you can. I'll recount that. One, two, three, four, five to get to here. So no trample zone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, you can. So you're going to do just your regular old nine accuracy. Uh, one. It's a hit. Are you kidding me? How the hell did that happen? It's the second card! <sighs> How did this happen? Okay. Person's doomed. Blah, 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 blah. They suffer damage. Blah, blah, blah. She loses all of her insanity. Okay. Knockback five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Whoa. She's knocked down. This is insane. This is getting very ridiculous. Monster in his belly. So I'm the team. The monster fade away. Now I'll run away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. It was literally the second card. Okay, we'll shuffle again. <sighs> okay. Let's, this is getting ridiculous. Okay, um... Okay, that's good. Uh, blah, 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 she's doomed, blah, 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 blah. This is the end of the monster's turn. I mean, end of the survivor's turn anyway. Everyone's already done everything. Uh, let's roll for brain trauma with plus two. Uh, brain trauma, oops. Okay, let's go. Brain trauma. Roll for Caressa with plus two. Uh, it's an eight. So it's actually a ten. Now she's frenzied. Uh, uh, frenzied. Gain one d5 insanity. One speed token and one strength token. Ignore slow on melee weapons. May not spend survival. You may not use fighting arts. You may not use weapon specializations or weapon mastery. <sighs> plus one speed token, plus one strength token. Basically for her. She doesn't use fighting arts anyway. Uh, weapon specializations. The likelihood of her missing was almost moot anyway. I mean, she could have rerolled ones, I guess, but... Uh, frenzied, whatever. Speed and strength token. Okay, so she's at uh, one speed token, and now she's at four strength. <sighs> speed for her is not the best. Okay. Now it's just the regular antelope's turn, or re antelope's regular. T Chow down. That means I. That means I did the wrong thing. Or are there multiple chow downs? Either when I was taking chow down, I accidentally put chow down at the bottom instead of healing a wound. I have to check to see if there's multiple chow downs. Right? Yeah, that means no, because I definitely put chow down at the bottom, unless this top card is also chow down. No, it's not. Okay. The reason why I say that if the top card would have also been chow down, because that would have been the card on top of this. And then if there was two in the deck, I would have put two at the bottom. Or no, putting the one at the bottom would have moved the other one up. Okay, so that's a mistake. Um...
I've never reshuffled his AI deck. So any card in these in this group here, I haven't seen and would have been okay. For, I'm just going to shuffle this. Um, and this is the one he's doing. That one. Whatever that one is. And the Chow Down should not have been in there. That was a mistake. Okay. So this is the card that should have been healed by Healed Wounds. I mean, it's, of course, it's one of the worst ones. <sighs> when this card comes into play, the monster gains plus one toughness. Discovering ticks is gruesome. Roll 1d10 for each survivor. And a result of 1d... Uh, wait, what? One, and then draw another AI card. Okay, so this goes into play. This is now his new trait. So everyone's going to roll 1d10. 6 plus, they're going to suffer a brain damage. Uh, I forgot to roll for Caressa. What's Frenzy? How much is it? 1d5 insanity. So Caressa's going to gain 2 more insanity. Okay. Here we go. First for Aurora, how much on a result of what is it? Discovering the ticks is gruesome. Roll 1d10 for each survivor. And roll to 6 plus, they suffer 1 brain damage per monster level. Okay, so she's not a 6 plus. Rodin, not a 6 plus. Kenna, that's a 6 plus. She suffers 2 damage, so she's down to 4 insanity. And Caressa, not a 6 plus. Okay. Now we draw another AI card, so now I gotta shuffle these. Okay, fight. Closest survivor in field of view. Kenna. Move and attack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. It is a... I can get rid of this minus one toughness. I'm just getting rid of the minus one toughness token because he gained one from Infest. Okay. So, it is a two speed. She has three evasions. So it's a five plus to hit on a two speed because he's got plus one speed. Five plus to hit, two speed. Those are not hits. It's actually a really bad roll for him, for once. Um, well, now she's going to get trampled anyway, but... Okay, so this is all misses, which is fine. Good, good. Now we do Diabolical. Um, okay. Diabolical is going to move forward. Okay, move full move target. And she's going to suffer two damage. Two damage to where? The wastes. That's fine. She's got one armor there. Uh, so that makes her have a light injury. Two damage. So she's going to go there, get knocked down from collision. I move eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, wow. <sighs> okay. Okay. Uh, here we go once again. Uh, I'm trying to think. Does Caressa stand up? I think she does. Right? Yeah, she's knocked down last survivor's turn. So then, yeah, at the start of the next survivor's turn is when you stand. Okay, so...
Well, first off, let's move with other people just in case something happens that targets someone. I don't see what would happen that would make target. One, two, three, four, five. She's one away. She would have to dash. All right, I'm going to dash with Aurora. Brings her down to two survival. So. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't want to go into the blind spot. But at the same time, I could maybe kill him this turn with Caressa if I don't draw the trap. <sighs> Is it worth going in the blind spot? She would get kicked or bucked, but yeah. Is it worth going in the blind spot? Just to get the plus one. Nah, I'm not going to do it. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, because she's dashing to there. Okay, uh, fist and tooth, two speed, eight plus accuracy. He's got minus one evasion. She's got um, plus one accuracy. So minus one evasion, plus one accuracy. It's going to be two speed, six plus. One hit. <sighs> One hit. Don't be the trap. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for not being the trap. <laughs> On a wound, though. Okay, that only affects people in the blind spot. Okay. So. Here we go. <sighs> She's got two strength. Um, yeah, that sucks. So she needs an 8 to wound, 9 or a 10 to critical because they're deadly. 8, 9, or 10. Oh my gosh! <laughs> That's a critical. Um, yeah, okay, so that's the one if she was insane. She is insane, but she doesn't have 5 survival. So that's a critical, at least. So that's a wound. So she got her fist and tooth thing. It's a wound. Okay. Uh, screaming in of resource. And that beast steak. Okay, beast steak. Okay, um, she can't, she already dashed, so she's going to be stuck there. When Survivor ends their act adjacent to the mud, so this is from Infested, roll 1d10, a result of 1 or 2, they get minus 1 strength. Okay. Okay, rolled in. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Let's go. Shield. You've got permanent minus one speed. So this is going to be two speed. Seven plus to hit. You've got a minus one accuracy. He's got a minus one evasion. Those nullify each other. So uh, seven plus to hit. Just wound. It's all I need. It's just one wound. Seven plus to hit. That's two hits. I don't like that. Damn it! How? It's the second card again! Screaming animal panics. Okay, the attacker is doomed. All survivors Jason and the monster suffer two brain damage, so they're all going to suffer four. That puts Aurora at zero, and Rodin gets a brain trauma. Okay, uh, just do this now. Brain trauma for Rodin. Brain trauma for Rodin. 
That's an 11. Maniacal Laughter. You were knocked down. Gain minus one speed. Uh, the priority target token and 1d5 insanity. Are you kidding me? So now he's knocked down. 1d5 insanity. So 5 insanity. Um, and the priority target token. <sighs> priority target token. 1d5 insanity. So he gets 5 insanity. Okay. Um, and knocked back 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And he's knocked down. Right? Isn't that what the brain trauma said? You were knocked down. Yep. You were knocked down. So he's knocked down and he's got priority target. Okay. Monster lands on its belly and gets a slide on its teeth. Turn the monster directly away from the attacker and full move forward in a straight line. So bad. All the way here. How is this possible? Would you please stop rolling the trap card, or drawing the trap card all the time? <sighs> I mean, I could just encourage now with Aurora just to get, just to end this. This is getting out of hand. Because she's got plus one speed. She would kill it. it she's, he's got four hit left. Alright, I'm encouraging. She's got one survival. Encouraging her to stand. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. She can't even make it there. Should have counted out if she could even make it there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. No. One, two, three, four, five. She can't even make it there. So encouraging her is not necessary. Uh, it's not necessary. That was dumb. Shouldn't have encouraged her. Should have counted out if she could even make it. Okay, so she can't even make it. <sighs> Let's just draw the next AI card. Ravenous. We already know who he's targeting. Uh, move and attack. Okay, so eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Doesn't make it to him. Tramples Aurora. What does Aurora get to the body? She actually is wearing body armor, so. She's down to two in the bo or one in the body because it's monster level, so that's two damage to the body. This doesn't happen. Okay, uh, didn't make it to him. Now he's diabolical in the survivor's turn. Target a random survivor in the trample zone. So even though he's priority target, or wait, does priority target overwrite random? Pretty sure priority target even overwrites random, like. It's going to charge him with Diabolical. Yeah, so he's going to get picked even though it's random. So it's going to pick him. So Diabolical. Full move through the target. So he's just going to run over him. One, two, three, four, five, six, and stop at the end of the board. Run over him. He's going to take some trample damage, which is suffer damage equal to the monster's level at a random hit location. So that's two damage to the head, or to the hands, whatever. He's now at three insanity because he was at five, so he's down to three insanity because whenever he's immortal. Okay, priority target is gone. Okay. Um, these two both stand up now. Okay. 
Okay. He gets knocked back over to here because... Okay. Think. Yeah, that's it. She stands up because she's fist and tooth specialist. Okay. So bad here. I, I don't want to encourage Rodin be kind of dumb, but at the same time, no one else can even attack, so... <sighs> One, two, three, four, five. So ten will go here. One, two, three, four, five. He's still going to be the closest. She'll do this for vein. Roll 1d10. Okay. Four. One iron. Okay, write down an iron. Now she can move. One, two, three, four, five. Should I shoot him with a 9? Can I get him with a 9? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yes, I could just barely get him with 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yes. I will shoot him with the one shot 9. So, uh, anything but a 1? Yeah, anything but a 1. It's a hit. 4 plus, or no, anything but a 1. And, oh no, he lost that minus one token for toughness because he gained it back when Infest came in. So, Strix, ah, six strength. Uh, oh wait, yeah, he's, she's frenzied. She's got the four strength now. Yeah, so, critting on a six, missing on a one. Okay, it's a crit, or not a crit, it's a one though. Or it's not a one, <laughs> so it's a wound. One wound. So I got three hits left. If I could just get within range of shooting him now with just a shot from her, it would be fine and he'd be dead. Unless I draw the trap for like the fifth time this game. Okay. Uh, monster's turn. Drawing an AI card. Bite. Closest survivor in field of view. That's Rodin. Uh, move. Boop. Okay. Uh, speed one. Accuracy two plus. Speed two. Accuracy two plus. So... He's got one natural evasion. <laughs> three plus. Speed two, three plus. And I dropped the dice. I'm not going to grab that right now. Okay, three, speed two, three plus. One hit. Damage three. Uh, we'll just roll for to the hand. Okay, uh, but he's got three insanity, so now he goes down to zero insanity. Uh, gains a bleeding token as well. Okay, he's going to gain a bleeding token. Okay, uh, let me grab that dice. Okay, now he's going to uh, diabolical. So, going to move forward. Full move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boop. 
And that will push him back over here, and he'll take another two damage to the body. So he's actually taking damage to the actual locations now. So he's got one spot, one armor left on his body. Okay. Uh huh. Okay, so he stands now. Knockdown does not stack. Okay. One, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, five. So I just need to get to here. One, two, three, four, and then to here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is it. Caressa. Four speed, because of stupid frenzy. Oh, I hate frenzy. Four speed, that's just too much speed. Four speed, accuracy six plus. He's got minus one evasion, accuracy five plus. She's got one evasion, accuracy four plus. Four plus. Four plus. It's three hits. Three is more like it. That's all I need anyway. Even one, two, three. Okay. It's got a first strike card. That sucks. But it's no trap here this time. So let's do the first strike first. Screaming Antelos massive eyes glistens with human like fear. If the attacker is insane, cancel all hits. She is not insane. She's a two insane. Or two insanity. She's not insane. Okay. She's not insane. Uh, so it's a six to crit. Anything but a one to wound. That's a crit. Now it's got another minus one evasion token. Uh, I'll mark it if he doesn't die. It's a minus one evasion token. Okay, next. I'll do... None of these matter. Uh... Enough, the wound doesn't result in him moving. And the reflex doesn't result in him moving. So these don't matter. So as long as I don't roll a 1. So, uh, Restless Shank, 6 plus to crit. That's a critical. And Restless Flank now, 6 plus to crit. That's also a critical. So that kills him. That's 3 wounds. He's dead. Oh, and I get two more antelope resources for those last two hits. Right? Yeah, gain one, gain one. Oh my, this got out of hand. One. Shape bone. And a pelt. It's the third shank bone, second pelt. Okay, now he's dead. Finally. <laughs> that was insane. That got out of hand really fast. Um, really badly. Okay, let's do this now. Let's do rewards. Uh, I think it's six and seven, just like the Giga Lion, but I'm always going to check. Huh. So, two hunt experience. So let's do the two hunt experience. Caressa does not age. Kenna does not age. Marking down her four insanity, two survival. Because I have to still flip over Kenna's card to see Aurora. I have not fixed it yet. Um, she gained a spear proficiency. She gained a bow proficiency. Let's flip over Aurora, two. Aurora ages. She's age three now. Uh, and she's also Fist and Tooth Master which is the best thing in the world. Uh, she's got zero insanity, so I'm just going to survival. Okay, 
Uh, let's age up Aurora. And she is now Fist and Tooth Master. Okay. Fist and Tooth Master is awesome. Okay, well, survivors of Fist and Tooth Master, they gain plus two permanent accuracy and plus two permanent strength. All survivors gain Fist and Tooth Specialization. And the Fist and Tooth Specialization is you may stand, if knocked down, at the start of the monster's turn or the survivor's turn. Which is amazing that now everybody can do that. So, that's awesome. Uh, so she gains plus two permanent accuracy and plus two permanent strength. So let's mark that down. That gives her, she's now three accuracy, four strength. Three accuracy, four strength. And now let's age her up. Um, just, Rodin does not age up. I'm just filling in his hunt experience right now. Uh, he's also at zero insanity. Uh, good for him. It's really bad for our immortal person. But, you know, whatever. So, let's age up Aurora. Age three, what do you get? Age three. Uh, age three. 2d10. Age three. 15. Random fighting art. That's whatever. Aurora's never going out, like, ever again. Maybe, if I absolutely need to, but losing the Fist and Tooth Specialist is, like, not good. Or losing Fist and Tooth Master is not good, so we're not going to ever send her out pretty much ever again. So let's get her her fighting art, whatever this is. She's ambidextrous. She already is ambidextrous. <sighs> Wait, I think I actually draw more fighting arts now. Didn't I pick that stupid thing where I could draw multiple fighting arts? No, I did not. Okay, whatever. Ambidextrous. She already is ambidextrous, so I guess she gets nothing. You get nothing. Okay, what a wasted age. Okay. Uh, oh, I didn't even realize. She had tumble. I could have been tumbling out of the way of this stuff. Oh, well. I think it only would have come up once. All right, that's the end of that. Everybody's aged up now. Now we get their weapon proficiencies. Now we get their rewards. Uh, we do not have pottery, but who cares? Six basic, seven screaming antelope. Here we go. Six basic, seven screaming antelope. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, crap. Didn't draw a single broken lantern. How would, how, I drew so much stuff. How did I not draw a broken lantern? Can this be anything? Yeah, it can't be a broken lantern. Okay, so, two more hide, two more bone. An organ and another question mark. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna mark this down as well. So it's two more hide. Puts us a total of six hide for this time. We have six hide, I'm putting this back here in the basic resources. Two monster bones. Uh, puts us at three monster bones for this whole endeavor two monster organs for this whole endeavor, and two question, question, questions for this whole endeavor. Okay, now we draw seven. All right, here we are mostly set up for the uh, settlement event. Um, so this was actually pretty neat, what just happened. 
So normally, like I said, I take down the showdown and then I go and set up the settling event and I decide everything that I'm going to do and what I'm going to build so the settling event goes faster. Um, however, so the neat thing was when I stopped to do everything and, you know, stop everything and then I went and checked, there was actually a comment posted on another video that I was doing resource collection wrong. Um, so when you draw from the... Uh, the resource decks from monsters. What I always did was when I crit, I would record what I got and then put it back in the deck, just like you do with a disorder or a fighting art or vermin or anything you get. You put it back in the deck. Actually, I don't think you do that with vermin either, right? Yeah, you don't do it with vermin either. So, um, I have to fix that. So I'm going to do that right now, and then we'll do just the events for the settlement, and then I'll pause again quick and figure out exactly what it is I'm going to spend it on. Um, so we'll fix that now. So I counted it all up. What I had recorded was, so with the basic resources, you're supposed to do a basic resources too, but that, it doesn't make sense so much with the basic resources. And I didn't want to go back and review all the footage. Um, but we had gotten like four basic resources. Uh, how many did I get? I got, what was this? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Basic resources, right? Um, but the ones I had got on the hunt event were unrelated to the antelope. Uh, like, I got them from the river, and then I think I got them from some other event. But So it shouldn't make sense that those would be put back into the deck, or the basic resource deck. Um, because they're unrelated. Like, I fished them out of a river. Like, those were already other dead things, so why would they count against the antelope? Um, so, the basic resources I'm not going to redraw. So what I'm going to do here is the antelope resources. I'll just redraw all of them. So I had gotten, what was it I said, five shank bones, two large uh, flat tooth, five pelt, three beast steak. Um... So what is that? That's 5, 6, 7, 12, 15. And I think there's only 17 cards. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 6, is 16 here. So it's all but one card. So I'll just redraw them. That way I'm not getting like more pelts than I could. Because I, I did. I, I got 5 pelts when there's only like 4 in the deck. Or three B stake when there's only like two in the deck. So I'll just draw everything but one card here, and then that will be the resources that we get from the antelope. So I messed that up, and I won't do that moving forward, so it's just going to be all but one card. One feels good. Which one? This one. Beast steak. So I didn't get a shank bone. So everything but a shank bone we got. So whatever's in here. Um, let's see. So we got everything from it except for one thing. Okay, uh, so that's two shank bones, three shank bones, one beast steak, uh, one spiral horn, four pelt, two tooth, a bladder, oh, two beast steak, a brain, and a gum. Yeah, so now that I've fixed it, yeah, overall the quality of material we got is a lot less. So that's fine. That's good. I f we fixed that part now. Um, okay, so let's just do the settlement events now before I'll go and I'll look at what we're going to make. So, of course, we always have Gorm Climate. Okay, 
So Gorm climb it first. Let's see what do we got? Six. Uh, settlement have hovel. Yes. Cyrus so huddle in size razor winds sickening lightning. Pull on the settlement. Plus two to home endeavors. Okay, not going to be doing those most likely. Um, let's see now. Let's roll the dice. A one. This was really bad last time I just drew the first card. How the. Okay, maybe I didn't shuffle the. But I did just shuffle them. I did just shuffle them. So cracks in the ground again. It's two years in a row now. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we did this last time. I'm small cracks in the earth widen, fissures belch up, smell failing vapor. Massive, uh, so I got a roll. A 1d10. Uh, 10. Uh, you find, so it's just another founding stone. Okay. Whew. Stupid cracks in the ground. Okay, now, so those are the two settlement events. Now we gotta do principal conviction. So, principal conviction, I have it right here. Principal conviction, the survivors must find a reason to be. Treasure the darkness and all its mystery or seek to master and grow, or master it and grow strong. So you can choose master the darkness or treasure the mystery. Um, so, would be these two innovations, or they're not there. It will be between barbaric or it's romantic. Romantic. Um, so with romantic, this is the thing I thought um, I had had innovate thing. Uh, when you gain a random fighting art, you draw three, and then you can choose one, or. Uh, everybody from now on, everybody, and then everybody going forward will always be born with plus one permanent strength. So, um, we're going to pick Barbaric. I was going to pick Romantic. Um, but, I don't know, Fighting Arts, we have so many people who can't either just can't use them... <laughs> Or they're not, we're not really taking advantage of them because I draw badly anyway. So it's, I'm not, like, it's just something that I'm not good with using because I'm so bad at it. Like, bad at rolling or I just draw badly. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go with Barbaric. So everyone's going to gain plus one permanent strength. And uh, our survival limit is going to go up. So now our survival limit is at six. Okay, so we're on the limit is at six. That's good. Um, now we have to roll here. So, um, life is finding the life is finding the perfect death. The lantern is power. By its light, all will be led to the final glorious moment. Add hands of heat to the next year on the timeline. So next year is just terrible in all like sense for us because. First we fight the hand, so we're not really going to get any resources. But then the Hooded Knight's going to come. He's probably going to kill Rodin, or she's probably going to kill Rodin. Rodin's probably going to die now that he's got a Twilight Sword. It's very likely because he's got no proficiency in that weapon. Uh, so he's probably going to die from that. And then we're going to have Hands of Heat, and we're just going to lose anything that's in our storage. So that's going to suck. And then not only that, on top of that... Um, because we had something else add Hands of Heat, like, we're going to have back-to-back -back Hands of Heat. So, we're not going to have too much resources. That's going to suck. So, that's just my life. Just getting poor outcomes to things. So, here we go. Now we roll the Settlement Gains, Conviction Principle Barbaric, which I already did. Now we roll a 1d10. So, here we go, 1d10. A 10... Nominated Survivor. They gain plus four courage in the following ability. Thundercaller. Once per once a lifetime on a hunt board space that's after overwhelming darkness, in place of rolling a random hunt event, use event 100. Okay, so that just is not very good. <sighs> okay. Uh, 
okay, uh, nominate a survivor to gain four courage. Uh, we're just going to nominate Kenna, because uh, that's going to max her out. So we're going to do see the truth with her. She's going to gain one, three, four. So now she's got max courage and Thundercaller with an ability. Spent 100. Okay. So now let's see the truth with her. Um, see the truth. The greatest courage is achieved when the past and future are abandoned. The void that remains is dark, endless well of strength. Fear and pain are your nourishment, and you will feast. Okay, so here we go. See the truth. Um, so we roll 1d10. Oh. You suddenly recall meeting a strange masked man who, for a moment, opened your second eyelids. Also, I just realized I forgot to have the light on above the green screen, so I just turned that on. That's... You recall meeting a strange masked man who, for a moment, opened your second eyelids when you saw... What you saw filled your mouth with the taste of your own death. Suffer the blind, severe head injury, and taste death. If you are already blind, do not suffer it again. So, she's going to suffer blind, which is fine, just lowers your accuracy. Okay, so let me make her suffer blind now. Okay, six, uh, bitter, or oh, this is the, the taste death roll, yeah, uh, bitter. When your second eyelids opened, everything looked the same. There was no wonder and no mystery. Death was simply everywhere. A bitter flavor filled your mouth as you accepted your harsh reality, gained the berserker fighting art, and the following ability. Each showdown, the first time you suffer the frenzy brain trauma, gain D10 survival. You may spend survival while frenzied. Okay. So let's just get the blind disorder out. Did I skip it? Oh, it's not a disorder. Blind's a, a head injury. Uh, so let's go here. Where's, uh, head? Severe injuries, head. Blind. Okay, you lose an eye. Suffer minus one permanent accuracy. This injury is permanent and can be recorded twice. Okay, minus one permanent accuracy. And Kenna lost an eye. So that brings her just down to normal. She's got just no bonus to accuracy now because she had plus one. Everybody gains plus one strength. So I did that on Kenna, but I'll do that later for everybody else. Um, okay. And all right, so that's it. I will uh go to figure out what it is we're going to spend all this on real quick along with the basic resources all right let me figure that out um at this point right now i've edited all the video up to this point uh so i went back and i've already seen all the fight i looked at everything so there were some mistakes made but luckily um i went back and i counted up everything i was doing for the um, basic resources. So I already had fixed, thanks to the one person who commented, I already fixed all the Screaming Antelope resources. That was easy to fix. So I went through, added everything in this count, and then I looked through the deck, and there actually are enough hide. So we had six hide, so we got all the hide right here. Six hide, I put some out here, hide, hide. 
So everything we drew from the basic resource deck would have been able to be drawn, so I don't need to redraw the deck um, for the basic resources. I have enough cards for everything that we drew. So, um, with that said, the, the basic resource thing is really, really weird. Uh, I don't know if I like the basic resource thing because... Here's, here's what could happen right now, right? So I know there's very little left in this deck here, right? Um, so if I were to innovate right now, or if I had Forbidden Dance, I could then spend innovations to get exactly what I wanted out of that deck. Because I know what's left in there. I could just turn uh, these into what's left very easily with the Harvest Ritual, and I could guarantee I get exactly what I want out of there, which is kind of stupid. Um, I understand it with the monster resources, because those are, like, think you, you could say, you know, like, thematically, you kill something and you skin it. You, you would protect exactly what it is that you wanted from the monster. And the monster only has a limited number of things since you're only killing one monster. So I get that. But these basic resources, since you get some of them on the hunt, and you could just get some of them from Harvest Ritual, and you just get some from, like, scab... Like, why would... Why would someone... Like, if I had taken Cannibal, um, why would someone be cannibalized, and then I could rig the deck to get exactly what I want? I don't know. It's really weird. And I don't like the mitigation of draw mitigation. Like, that's all that it really is with the, when it comes to the basic resources. Um, yeah, so I'd be interested to hear what people think about that. Where you can only draw a limited number of basic resources. Because this Harvest Ritual, like I said, I, I could get exactly what I want out of there. I could spend one... In, I'm at the point right now where I could spend one innovation doing Harvest Ritual, and I could get just three scrap. Like, because that's all that's really left in there. So, like, I I know, like, it's like I rigged the, it's like cheating, almost, I don't know. Uh, so with that said, we're, we're just going to innovate real quick. So, um, I have everything's lined out. So, yeah, that I'm going to do there. So I'll spend one innovation, so we spend a monster bone, a muscly gum, and this question, question will be the hide to innovate real quick. So what we're looking for is... Um, what should we call it? Uh, either Forbidden Dance to try to get evasion, or um, we're looking for uh, Song of the Brave, or um, one more thing. But here we go. So we draw four. Oh, there's Song of the Brave. It's two. Albedo. It's three. Nightmare, Nightmare Train is also good. Oh, Cooking. That's the other one I wanted, was cooking. Um, so Song of the Brave or cooking. Song of the Brave would let us finally get rid of Gorm Climate, and we could finally go back, hunt the Gorm, and get that axe. So it's between Song of the Brave and cooking. Here's Song of the Brave and cooking. Um, cooking is also good because uh, we have all these beasts. Like, you can only make one, you can only make one meal every year. Um... So it's best to get a lot of your cooking in to, since you, rather than wait at the end. And we're just missing a tick. Otherwise, we already had the beef steak and the bone shank, and we have the bladder and the bone shank. Uh, so if we just get, like, a tick somewhere along, then we start getting the evasion and the strength meals. So cooking would be nice. However, we can't cook right now because, like I said, we're missing the tick, and I'm also missing the other one for the strength. So... Um, cooking doesn't help us right now. Song of the Brave doesn't really help us right now either, because Song of the, we're fighting the hand, <laughs> so we're not even going to go out to Overwhelming Darkness, and I can't even fight a Gorm next year, because we're fighting the hand. And I don't even know if I want to fight a Gorm after the hand. I think I, I need to start fighting the Dung Beetle Knight, because I want to get the, uh, Zambatos upgraded, calcified. So, uh... Uh, we'll just take Song of the Brave, because it has consequences that get added to the deck. I forget what they even are, but... So we're taking Song of the Brave. 
Okay, that kind of sucks because cooking would have been great, but let's see what Song of the Brave adds. Uh, Song of the Brave... Oh, Sculpture would have been nice to get to. Where's Song of the Brave? Are there any add Song of the Brave consequences? I don't see any. Oh, Saga. Oh, Saga's good. Um, yeah, so it's just Saga. But Saga's really good. If that comes up, we'd get Saga. So... We have Song of the Brave now, add that to our Innovations uh, Saga, we add to in this Innovations deck. Okay, now, with that said, there's our Innovations deck. Okay, now we're ready to spend resources. So, we're basically just going to do this four times, because I have no scrap. Uh, so we have to go scrap scavenging. All right, so here we are. It's scrap scavenging. Is so basically, we're just going to spend survival, or we're going to get a broken lantern because I need scrap, or we're going to get courage. So anything other than scrap is just bad. <laughs> so we'll pick people who can gain courage. Now Kenna can't gain any more courage. Uh, we could do Aurora, but I don't think Aurora is going to go out anymore now since she's a fist and tooth master. Um, we're kind of done with her. We don't want her to die. Fist and Tooth Master is amazing. If she were to ever die, that would be, like, absolutely terrible. So, I don't think Aurora is ever going to go out. Kenna can't gain courage. There's no point. Uh, we can do it with Ken. He's got five survival. So, here we go. Spending one innovation. Uh, here we go, Ken, to Scrap Scavenge. Or, yeah, Scrap Scavenge. Okay, so he spends his survival. He's down to four. Oh, well, I'm not going to... I'll wait till I'm all done. Okay, Ken again. Uh, scrap Scavenge. Uh, seven. That's one Broken Lantern. Okay. Ken again for Scrap Scavenge. It's two Broken Lanterns. One more time, Ken. Scrap Scavenge. It's another Broken Lantern. So we got three Broken Lanterns. How many did I need? I needed uh, one, pretty much just one for the mask and one for the horn. So I only needed two and I got three. Uh, so that's good. Okay, so Ken only had to waste one survival actually, so he's still only down to four. Um, okay, that's actually good. Now, put this here. Okay, so we did everything we needed. Now we just spend resources um, to make things. Okay, so with that said, let's get making. So we had three broken lanterns. Uh, one of them. We're going to spend right away to get the Screaming Horn with the Spiral Horn and a Scrap. We're going to get that Screaming Horn, so let me just grab that. Okay, so Screaming Horn. Okay, and as you can see, we're just going to make the whole Screaming Antelope set. So, with that said, we are making the entire Screaming Antelope set. Spiral Horn plus a Scrap. One pelt for the screaming skirt, one pelt and a hide for the warmers, pelt and a hide for the bracers, pelt and a bone for the coat. So, uh, that's not good. Here is the entirety of the antelope set, which we will be making. Um, which is good, good, good. Now, we're probably going to give that to the um, spear user, so whoever's going to be using the spears. And now, we got two scrap left. Let's continue making leather. Um, so, 
Oh, that's what this actually this last resource or last innovation here. We got to make leather. So let's make leather. So leather making. Spend any number. Um. Okay. So yeah, there's the entirety of the set for the screaming antelope. So we have an entire set now. So that's good. Entire set. All these are all spent. I'll clean it up later. Let's now make a leather. So we'll spend this, in, like I said, this last endeavor to make any number of leather that we can. So what I want to do is make a shield. So that requires one hide and anything else require a hide? Oh, the boots require a hide and the braces require a hide. So that leaves us with two leather. Is that enough? That is not enough. Two leather is definitely not enough to make everything. So what can we do? We already have the skirt and the arm. So we have the body and the waist. Okay, so what do I really need? I need the mask for sure. So this would be this leather and one scrap. Okay, so we'll spend, we're doing, we made leather anyway, so it doesn't matter. I don't need to have it exact, I don't need to do exactly how many I made right now before I actually do it. So we'll convert a question, question, question into a leather and spend the um, resource now um, and spend the, the scrap. So we'll have one broken lantern left, it looks like. Okay. So that makes the leather mask. So let's get the leather mask out, which is good because uh, we needed a red infinity at the bottom to complete the uh, Zimbato. Because the person who's going to be using the Zimbato is most likely going to be the person who... So here's the Zimbato wielder right now. This was Aurora. She was using fist and tooth, but now since we don't need to bring Aurora out anymore, we actually will be using a great weapon. So there, we we needed the we needed the bottom to fill this to give that devastating. So okay, so we'll make the leather mask, which is good. Leather mask, good. Um, I don't think Rodin has any chance of surviving, but if he did, leather's also good because it gives you a lot of insanity. Um, when you depart and you can don't need the full set like the full set isn't necessary like we could make the the leg warmers which also give you insanity so be good for Rodin if he even survives but I don't think he's gonna survive now that he's got that stupid twilight sword okay so that's the leather mask um, so we have this the bracers no we want the boots so we'll make a leather and a hide here to get the boots um, yeah, so one of these will count as leather, one is just a regular old hide to get the boots now. Okay, leather boots. Which is cool, because we're going to link those up with the, um, because you can move when you do that. And we're going to link that to the, um, to the Monster Grease and the Zimbato. So Monster Grease and Zimbato will enable that to be both linked. So we'll be able to move it. That's also nice. Okay. Um, I don't think we can make the bracers. It'd be a leather and a hide to make the bracers. But I think I would rather have the round shield rather than the gorn shield. If I'm going to be picky and pick exactly what I want, I think it's much better to get the leather shield than the gorn shield because it adds an extra hit to everything, where the Gorm just gives you a free block if you wound. Very rarely was anybody going to be wounding with that thing. Um, so yeah, I think I think the shield, the, the round shield is much better. Yeah, we'll make the round shield, and then, so one of these is a leather, one counts as a hide, and then we spend a bone. So we'll just spend this regular old monster bone 
to make the regular shield, and I can give the Gorm shield to someone else. So yeah, the regular shield's nice because, I mean not the regular, the leather shield, because it adds plus one to all hit locations, and then that's in addition to being a shield uh, specialist, which also does the same exact thing. So we'll make that. So then basically, next thing we fight is just going to be some, uh, the next thing we fight, all we need is like one basic hide to make the bracers. Or no, we need two to hide to make the bracers. Okay, so that is basically it. Um, the thing that sucks here is we're going to have um, hands of heat. So that's great. So all these resources are going to be lost unless I can think of something to do with them. But I don't think there's anything I can do. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what I can do with these. I'd like to keep them. So maybe Hands of Heat, we won't just blow through everything. Maybe we'll only lose half of it or... I don't know. Um, but I would like to keep the beef steaks and the bladder, at least. And the shank bones. This other stuff, I don't care. It goes away. The organs. and I mean, we've got tons of other bones in the in there too. Tons and tons of them. Um, let's see. Yeah, we got like four great cat claws. It's all kind of, and tons and tons of uh, insects. So it's all just gonna suck. Canthus plants. Yeah, it's all, it's all just gonna suck. <laughs> so, um, yeah, at the start of the next episode, if I think of something to do it, I don't think so though. I think it's just I think I'm just gonna have to chart all these down and lose them. So um Alright. So thank you much uh for watching. Next one is the hand. So that will be fun. Um Oh wait, do we fight no wait, we don't fight the hand this year. Next year. Uh We'd fight him at, at the end of next, so it wouldn't be next episode, it would be the following episode. Okay, well, either way, so maybe we'll fight that Gorm then. Alright, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next Lantern year.